Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, when I was a kid, the Super Nintendo was large and grey, and now it is small and a fire stick. Okay, it's a fire stick. Streets of flipping rage. Super Mario Kart. In order to install our emulator to our Fire Stick, we need to install two pieces of software. The first one is called RetroArch. Did you like that? I did that just for you. Uh, and you need to install Apps to Fire. Apps to Fire will allow us to put RetroArch on our Fire Stick. So download those two applications from the Play Store now. I will wait. I won't really wait. That would be ridiculous. Pause the video and download those two applications. Your Wi-Fi network has mobile phones and laptops and PCs and all sorts of things connected to it and basically apps to fire needs to know which one of those things it's sending its information to. Obviously it's your fire stick. Uh, so in order to do this we need to tell apps to fire whereabouts on the network your fire stick is. So we need to find the IP address of your fire stick. In order to find the IP address of your fire stick you just need to go into settings, my fire TV, about and then network. In network you'll find several pieces of information and the one you're interested in is IP address. Write it down. Don't write mine down, write yours down. In your mobile phone then, we just need to open up the apps to fire application, scroll across to the setup tab, put in our IP address and press the save button. That is it, we can now transfer files and applications across our network from our mobile phone to our fire stick. Awesome. Because RetroArch is installed on this phone, I could actually play games on this phone, but that would be weird. I'm not going to do that. Uh, what we've done it for, though, is so we can find it in the local apps tab. So I'm going to scroll down to RetroArch, select it, and say install. Simple as that. It is now installing across the network onto my Fire Stick because it knows where my Fire Stick is, and it's sending the files there. Now we wait for a very, very long time. So now that we've aggressively forced several video games consoles right into my Fire Stick's butthole, it is now time to upload some video games. So what I'm going to do is press this button up here and go to uh, the folder that has my video games in it. You will need to download these video games from the internet. They're called ROMs. If you search for Super Mario Kart ROM, you'll find a website which will give you ROMs. They are probably not legal, and that's why I'm not going to tell you where to get them from. Uh, I'm going to scroll down to find Final Fight, for example, for my Sega Mega Drive. It's a zip file, and I'm just going to press Upload, and it's now sent it to my Fire Stick. My Fire Stick now has that in its butthole, too. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to pair this Bluetooth control pad to my Fire Stick by going to Settings, across to Controllers and Bluetooth Devices, and then Game Controllers, and then Add New Game Controller. I'm then going to hold down the X button and the Sminica button until the Sminica button flashes rapidly, so it is in pairing mode. I'm then going to do this over and over again, rebooting the Fire Stick, throwing the controller against the wall a few times, and generally acting like an angry toddler until it eventually pairs because for some reason, the initial pairing process is all over the flipping place. Now we can open RetroArch on our Fire Stick, and the first thing it will do is extract some files so that we will be able to install and access a Super Nintendo and Mega Drive emulators. You can see they're rocking that PlayStation vibe, and this is basically a portal where we can install a Super Nintendo, a Mega Drive, and various other consoles so that we can have a place to access games from any of those consoles. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to bind buttons on your control pad in case any of them are not working. By default, my pad worked great, except for two fairly important buttons, start and select, which meant I could do everything with the game except start playing it. So I'm going to remap them now by going into settings and then input and scrolling down to input user one binds. This is a list of all the buttons a standard game will have and I'm going to scroll down till I find the ones that are broken. 
Uh, if I then click on them and hold down the button on the controller, it should correspond with that and remap the button. So the first thing we're going to do is install a Super Nintendo emulator, which RetroArch calls Cores for some bizarre reason. So we're going to go into Load Core and then Download Core and scroll through the list for the ones we want. The two I've tested as working are SNES 9X for Super Nintendo and the Sega Pico for the Mega Drive. Now that our Super Nintendo Core is installed, we can load games which they have chosen to call Content. Because, you know, why name things what they are called in real life when we could just name them random confusing utterances instead? So all we do is browse to the location that we've pushed the games to from our phone and select Load Archive, and boom, we have Mario Kart. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have, please give it a thumbs up, if you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button, come hang out with me at these places as usual, and if you want to help make these videos a possibility, like these flipping awesome people here, you can do so at either Patreon or PayPal, and I'll see you next time. So now that we've aggressively forced several video games consoles right into my Fire Sticks butthole, <laughs> we now need to upload... <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've aggressively forced several video games consoles right into my Raspberry Pi's butthole, it's not a Raspberry Pi. Ha! Let's start again. <laughs>